Today we are going to be doing a beginner's guide to mixing bass in Logic Pro X. We're going to be using just Logic Stock plugins and hopefully you find today's video helpful. Let's jump straight into the video. Uh, we've got a recording which has drums, bass and guitar. This is the bass by itself. Bass with the drums. As you can hear, there's a lot more low end that could be enhanced uh, in the bass. Also, the levels are a bit off. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some EQ, some compression, and then we're going to balance the bass to the kick and the snare more importantly. If we get our channel up, again, press X to bring up the mix window. Now, the kick, um, the snare, and the bass all follow each other in terms of the rhythm section song on. So if you've got these things really well balanced to each other, you're already on to getting a really good uh, sounding mix. So what we're going to do is we're just going to worry about the, the kick, the snare, and the bass in this. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag the bass up so it's like at a decent level. Nice. So let's open up our EQ. Let's see what's going on. Now, like we did with the kick and the snare, we're going to use that rule, low cut, high cut, and then everything in between. So first, we're going to provide a low cut to get rid of any unwanted noise. This is very important mixing to get rid of unwanted noise. So let's drag it down. High cut. Maybe a bit higher. There we go. Right, now again, we want to find where that bass resonates. We want to get the nice punch out of the bass to match the snare and the kick. So let's go looking for that. Again, like I said, what we have to do to find the sounds we want to enhance, but also to uh, get rid of, always make a notch filter, use this one to make it very narrow so we can specifically look for them frequencies which really resonate. And we're going to enhance these qualities. Starting down here. So there's a couple places like this, so let's put them both up. Something at 80 hertz I liked. Bass was recorded through an amp, a condenser microphone to the amp to be more exact. So that means we are going to be having bleed from the rest of the room and we want to get rid of that. Again, we're going to make a notch filter. We are going to make it thin so we can isolate them certain frequencies and we're going to go looking for that boxy sound, which is always within, I'd say 250 to 500, 300 to 500, 300 to 600, literally around that area, the low mids. <laughs> And you notice that when we cut that out, the, the bass suddenly sounds so much more clean. There's always going to be unwanted noise and background noise and bleed that we don't want. So that's why it's important to try and cut that stuff out. Because especially when you get to the stage of compressing later on in the mix, you're going to bring in all them bad qualities up. We don't want that. So, happy with the EQ. Now we're going to compress. We're not going to overcomplicate at this stage, just use the Platinum Digital, very solid compressor, uh, compressor. Um, doesn't have any sort of added emulation of any sort of vintage compressor, so this is very clean sounding, so we know it's going to not affect the sound that we've made through the EQ. Let's create a ceiling again. We know that the bass is going to want to jump out at times, low end, it's going to be really punchy, so creating that ceiling, what it does is it just reassures us that it's not going to jump out in the mix. And then we're going to bring up the threshold. Brings up sort of like the, the quieter aspects of the bass. That'll be more of the low end, sort of like the rumble. Get that nice low end, like more you feel it than you hear it side of the bass. And then we can see the compressor going to work. Now, I have a saying about compressors. Anything above minus five, I always class as a more aggressive application of compressing. If you want to have a more natural sounding mix, always try and keep it at minus five or below when applying the compressor. Uh, that's just when you might start to hear the compressor really starting to work. 
might do a little bit of fill around here. Might even bring up some some fret noise. Oh yeah, that's good. But I wanted that fret noise to sort of give it more of a live feel. So I want to bring that across in the mix, so that's why I'm adding that fret noise in, which is in the higher end. So let's listen to everything together. Let's mix it in. Just keep an eye on the, uh, the bass, kick and snare level. And there you go. That is a beginner's guide to mixing bass.